Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this car back together again. I'm going to try to reflect as much of the information that I've read and uh, gotten advice uh, about as possible. Um, there may be some mistakes here, but bear with me. Uh, verify against your own information sources, but this is how I'm putting this together. Thanks uh, very much, uh, Ed and the Honda305.com uh, forum. Uh, amazing sources of information. So first, remember that the carbs bolt onto the engine like this. This is the intake and this is the engine side. This is a PW26 carburetor. And the slides that were in it, I discovered, were the wrong ones. They were flipped. This slide says PW26R, which I've now switched over to be on the right side, but it wasn't. It was on the left side and vice versa for the PW26L. It was on the right hand side. So I flipped them, but Ed pointed out that I also had the wrong caps on because when these caps are you know, installed, this one was over here and the um, hole where the cable goes in would have been away from the frame where it needs to be on the frame side. So I've got those switched over and corrected. Let's go ahead and put the needle in. The, the brand new jet needle is a D9 jet needle. And I understand that this little clip needs to go on the second slot up or the fourth slot down. Now stock had them at the second one from the top instead of the second one from the bottom. Um, but it was awful lean. And so what this does is it riches it up a bit. So there, my clips on the second notch from the bottom up. That then goes into the slide, and then the retainer clip pops down here, and you need to set the retainer clip so that it has a hole where the cable will come up this way, or a, a gap. So just kind of finger seat that down in there. That should be good. And then we can go ahead and verify that it slides correctly in the carb. Sure enough, that just drops right in and out of there. So I'm pretty happy with that. With that in, we can put the spring in the top. There is a brand new little gasket that goes in the top of the cap. And that fits to the spring like that. And then assembles onto the top of the curb. Like that. Now I'll need to take this off again, of course, when I get it onto the bike to get the uh, to get the cable set. But I'm just doing this for now so that I don't lose those parts, so that I keep them together with the carb, carb they're supposed to go to. All right. So the carb is now, or the slide is now inside of the carb. Next step is that we're going to go ahead and put in the idle screw and the fuel mixture screw. The fuel mixture screw, we'll do that first. There is a little rubber O-ring that came with the kit, and that goes over our um, uh, little little idle screw, and or uh, mix, mixture, I'm sorry, that goes over the mixture screw, and that then gets connected onto a spring, which loads down into the carb, and then we screw this down in. So using light hand pressure, we're not going to you know, torque this thing down, it is brass. But we'll go ahead and tighten it. I'm feeling the spring resist and the, the rubber seal there. That seats. Now I don't want to go beyond the seat. But what I want to do now is I want to go out one and a half turns. So that's half, one, and or I'm sorry, one and a quarter. So one and a quarter out. So there, that should be our starting setting. Now I'm going to put a spring into the idle screw and run it in. And to begin with, the next step once we get it on the bike and we do some synchronization is that we want to run this, there we go, we want to run that screw in just enough so that it's still, so the slide still gets to the bottom. There we go. We will bench sync this here in a moment. But one thing I wanted to show you is that, I don't know if you can see this, but when you turn the screw in, it raises the slide ever so little 
so that it allows just enough air to pass through at idle to pick up fuel out of the idle jet to um, keep the engine running. And you want to get these set so that they're feeding the same amount of air, uh, fuel air mixture, um, to both carburetors at the same RPM. And that's what we'll do with the bench sink is just to get it started. And then we'll do some fine tuning once we get it onto the bike. But I'm going to go ahead and back that off just a bit now. Okay, so that is those external screws are set. Now let's go ahead and in just install the jets. You'll see the needle poking through here. That's going to go into the holder, the main jet holder. And that main jet holder screws down in. And the main jet holder then holds. What do you think it holds? It holds the main jet. I'll use an 8 millimeter wrench here to just slightly tighten it. I'm not cranking on it. But now the main jet goes in. Now the main jets that I got with the keister kit are actually threaded for a different holder. It turns out I have probably the wrong holder for this carb. But I'm going to use this main jet holder and I'm going to use my old main jets. My old main jet is a 135. The hole looks good. It doesn't look like it's been reamed out. It doesn't look like it's damaged in any way. So I'm going to go ahead and take the chance to use the old one because I don't have a new holder to fit the new jets. Like I said, they're the same size and they look good. So go ahead and screw those down. And just like that. Now I'm going to put my idle jet in. Now this is the brand new idle jet. That brand new idle jet size is a 42. And that just kind of wiggles down in. And then you use the screwdriver again, real light finger pressure just to see it. And then just a little bit of tightening like that so they don't vibrate out. All right, those are in. Now, when the float is set, the float will move back and forth to uh, push a plunger up into the fuel shutoff. This is the fuel shutoff seat or valve. I guess the two of them together consider the valve assembly. Oh, and by the way, there is a little metal washer that connects onto that that comes with the kit that I'll put on. And I'll finger tighten that. Like that. And then use a 10 millimeter wrench to just finger tighten like that. And then the the valve itself drops into the top and uh, then we can put our float on. Now this is where things get to be kind of fun. The float itself installs like this and then you put the pin in. So that's really, really easy. But what's not so easy and obvious is how we get the height set. The reason why the height setting is important with all carbs is that you want it to be so that the, the valve is open to allow fuel to flow down in to fill the bowl when the bowl is empty. But when the, the bowl fills up, you want that to shut off because you want just the right amount of fuel to be available to the jets so that it can aspirate through and feed the engine. The height of this thing is really important. There are a couple different ways of doing this. I'm going to choose to do this um, the way that I was advised. I'm going to set it so that the float itself just tops out at the top of the holder right here. So where the main jet meets the holder, that point right there is where the bottom of the float, where I'm going to set the bottom of the float. Now what I've already done is I've already set the floats themselves to be the same height off of the tab. Now all I have to do is adjust the tab so that it is of the right height. To do that, what I found to be easiest is to open up the tab too much this way and then adjust it closer once I get it on the card. What I always struggle with is trying to get that tab set without bending the arm and making these non-level. Wow, that already is really good. So the way that I do it is that there's a teeny bit of weight 
on this. It's probably not a whole lot, but a teeny bit of weight. And I like to, to hold it sideways so the weight's really negligible. It's just pointing against, just touching against that spring. And I need a little bit more. So, I don't know. Let's see if I can do this while it's on. Again, I'm trying to be really careful not to, uh, to bend these sideways. Really hard to see. The floats are level against the top of the holder. All right, good, good. Next step is to put the bowl on. But first, I need to get my gasket. Seat that in there. You also wanna make sure that your floats don't rub up against the gasket. So you might have to bend them in a little bit. And then the bowl itself should fit right over top and seat firmly all the way around and then clip on. Now when I move it, I should hear it. Hear it? That means it's moving freely. I was pointed out also that there used to be a tube that came off the bottom here and this is an overflow but it's not just an overflow, it also is to allow um, air pressure to compensate, to, to keep suction from um, occurring inside of the bowl. And so I was advised to, to remove this because um, you wouldn't have the right amount of pressure or relaxation under speed. This is a drain here, and so I went ahead and I tightened this drain up because once I start filling fuel, I don't want it to all pour out. So those are set. And uh, one last thing is to put the fuel feed connector on. Um, I went ahead and reused the existing gaskets. There were a couple little metal ones that came with the kit. I'm going to reuse these just because they're, they're paper and I kind of like the fibrous gasket. I think they seal maybe a little bit better. I could be wrong, but I'm going to try starting with them and if I, get it, if I get any kind of leakage, then I'll flip over to use the metal ones. So that just finger tightens. I'm going to run, since these are installed like this, and the tubes from the fuel, the pep cock come down this way, I'm going to point these almost straight up, but maybe to a little bit of a, a back angle so they clear this, and then tighten with a 10 millimeter wrench. You can tighten a little bit harder on this than you, than you want to with the brass ones. It also compresses the fibrous um, washers, so that's all nice and tight. One of the things that I do want to mention that you can use, that you can do to test this, is you can blow into this tube, and if the carb is sitting this way, you should be able to blow air into the bowl. I can hear it, you can, but when you turn this thing upside down, you should not be able to blow air in. Nope, it's sealed well, so that's a good test. So the carb is now assembled, and on the front, I'll wait to put this ring because it just falls off if I don't. To when I put it on the engine and there's a couple of uh, bolts that will adhere that back onto the engine. Now one of the things that that I typically do with carbs, I don't know if it's the exact right thing to do here, but I, I like to bench sync these things by setting the idle level to be just of a certain value and then I have, um, I just have them more or less in sync. So this might be the wrong way to do it, but the way it's the way that I'm used to doing it and let's give it a try. So what I do is I just arbitrarily grab a feeler gauge and I run that down to the, um, uh, through to the slide to get just a little bit of friction when it's flat against the, the carb slide, just like that. What I'll do then is I will make sure that that is the same amount of friction and gap for when I assemble um, the other side uh, carb. So I'll go ahead and finish assembling it and then I'll measure the two of them and uh, they'll be ready to put onto the bike as is. With the petcock, what I did is I went ahead and assembled it with a brand new bowl with a rubber ring in there and also went ahead and, and reassembled the um, the switch here with the rubber uh, seal. And there's also for this screw, there 
is a an O-ring or a gasket that you um, that I bought to replace the ripped up one that was in there, and I placed it. And what's cool about it is that you put this up against the fuel tank, and then you um, reverse thread the bottom, and you positive thread the top by turning this, and it joins the two together, and then there's a, a rubber um, ring there that connects the two. So I've got him all ready to go uh, to put on the bike. And oh, once these are all assembled, I'll take the choke connecting arm and I will uh, go ahead and put those washers and I'll put a, a couple um, uh, hairpins through and, uh, and they should have those good to go. So I think that's it to point out for the assembly of these. Let's see if we can get these carbs back on. First things first, I understand that the throttle cable is supposed to come around here on the right hand side and come through over the sides of the inner part of the frame like this. And that looks about right because then it won't be sitting under the tank. I think the way that it was before is it came across the top and down. So I think that seems about right because this stuff would be hid behind the tank as well. All right. First, let's get the carbs inserted or positioned. I went ahead and, and bolted on the uh, the choke linkage like that and like that. And by the way, it's the the left spark plug is held by a little clip here that is connected on the outside of the. Uh, carb. It doesn't go between the carb and the seal in there. Oh, and I need to add those little rubber O-rings first, don't I? All right, do that here on the left. I know you can't see this, but trust me. There we go. And then just hold it to hold it in place. I'll put in one of the 10 millimeter um, there we go and then that 10 millimeter nut okay I got the carbs on and uh, tightened down and one of the things that I want to do now is to start to calibrate uh, some additional stuff. I wanted to calibrate the choke lever. I don't know that it really matters that much, but while I'm at it, I might as well. Okay, so th this is both closed on the primary and the choke is closed on the secondary. That's good, or on the right-hand carb. But when I lift up this just a little bit, it starts to crack. I've got nothing here. If I lift, lift up even further, actually if I go to where this starts to open, see there where it's starting to make some room? This one's quite a bit further open. And I don't know if you can tell, but if I bring this up right at halfway, this one is only open about 30 or 40 percent. So what I want to do is I want to tighten this linkage so that this pulls this a little bit further. Everybody likes a good confession, right? Well, in the software engineering world, there's some sort of a saying similar to don't pre-optimize your code, or if you're thinking about it, don't. And the second rule is don't pre-optimize your code. Um, in this case, don't pre-optimize the linkage between the um, two chokes, uh, because if you try to undo a year's um, <laughs> fixed uh, buckle you will snap it and I did so I ran out to the hardware store and picked up a turnbuckle and uh, put some blue um, thread lock inside and and got little washers and proper uh, cotter pins and got that affixed and then I went ahead and synchronized these so that they are closing at the exact same time and opening the exact same amount so it's it's optimized now but now I've got a funky looking turnbuckle that is connecting the two I'll see if I can find uh, a, um, an original or an aftermarket that looks better than this, but this will work okay. So that's that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and connect the throttle linkages up to the carbs and uh, see what I get from there. So first thing I'm going to do here is I, while I'm on the left-hand side, I'll open this up 
And remember I have a top and I have this cap and remember that I was told that this needs to be on the side towards the frame, which is awesome. Um, and my seal goes right here. And then my spring and my slide. Now I run my cable down through and let's see, push in and then pull. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta go through the. <laughs> I gotta go through everything first. Here I'm being stupid. All right, down through here. And pull that as much as I can. There we go. And the spring up to here to get that out of the way. Oops, make sure I go all the way through like that. And now this like that. Spring down in the center. And now this should go in onto the top of the carb. That'll rotate to the back. This will rotate, whoops, like this. There we go. There we go. There, now that's linked back up. Other side. Now, let's see if my throttle actually works. It does, but it does not spring back very well. My cable's probably pretty uh, corroded. So I will... Oh boy. Seems loose here. Look up. There we go. There's tape that went around the top to cover something. What was that? Oh, because this is uh, snapped off. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, well, it works, but I'm going to need a new throttle cable. I might as well. It's just... <laughs> it's just not feeding backwards. And so I wouldn't reliably be able to not so bad when I straighten all these things out. But anyway, this is broken, and so I need to get a new um, cable that uh, connects to a Y here that goes down to these guys. But I think that my, my carbs are springing okay. They're connected okay. There's no point calibrating them yet because I want to get a new cable. But uh, all right, so we've got it reassembled. So that completes the carb reassembly process. Uh, now on to the engine and to uh, test my timing and my, um, uh, my cam and all the rest of the stuff. So we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.